Unfortunately, this world isn't always a fair place, and sometimes you need a lawyer. For instance, have you ever been in a situation where you've seen a need and felt compelled to help? Or worse yet, have you ever done a good deed and not been fairly compensated? If the answer is yes to any of these questions, don't hesitate in calling me, Dirk Hardcastle. I'm a lawyer. My office specializes in cases where people have loved other people and have been inconvenienced. My solution? Take them to court! Have you ever been nice to someone you didn't feel like being nice to? Not on my watch. Take them to court! Have you ever had to listen to someone share their hopes, dreams, and fears? Cha-ching! Take them to court! There are a lot of people out there who give money to groups and organizations and individuals they care deeply about. But if they would have called me, I would have got all their money back tenfold. Cold hard cash. I didn't go to eight weeks of online law school so that you would have to love selflessly. My name's Dirk Hardcastle, and if you have to turn the other cheek, you better get paid. All right. <laughs> a, little, a little humor for this morning as we get underway. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Fount for worship on this Sunday, the 13th of September, 2020. We are glad to welcome you. I am Pastor Glenn, and the rest of the team here for the live stream worship welcomes you. We've uh, had worship outside this morning at 9 o'clock out in the uh, uh, courtyard area of the church, and we had a great turnout again this week. We're glad to have so many people turn out for our in-person worship, but we're also glad to have you together here with us on this live stream worship at 1030 every Sunday morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you and to, to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. You saw the announcements in the uh, video stream earlier, and uh, we just want to encourage you to uh, go to our website at thefount.church and learn all about the various activities and ministries, both online and now in person, that we have here at the church. You're welcome to attend and to participate in any of them. And for more information, you can call the church office, and uh, Julie would be happy to fill you in on any questions you might have. So it's a pleasure to welcome you. I'm going to lead us in a time of prayer, and then we're gonna transition over to Christina, who will be leading our worship time this morning. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to gather in the name of Jesus on this live stream, wherever we are, in our households, in our places of employment, or at a friend's home, wherever we are, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for the technology that enables us to gather safely. And we ask that you would fill us with your spirit, even as we worship you and lift your name for high honor. Give us your presence with power and with wisdom, we pray. We offer ourselves, we offer this time to you. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. All right, now we're going to turn it over to Christina as she leads us in some worship singing.
that you are here for us always. And God, I thank you that we can come to you and give everything we have to you and you bear it all for us. God, I thank you. Thank you for your presence and I thank you for your goodness. song for you. If you followed the worship nights that Emanuela and Nina and I did, we did this song a few times. It's called Alabaster Heart, um, but I chose it just because um, it's all about surrender, and sometimes we just have to give it all to God, and um, I personally think that I know everything and that I can figure it all out, but um, when I make a decision and then it goes wrong, I'm like, okay, God, I will trust in you. So um, I just wanted to sing the chorus first so that it's um, introduced to you a little bit more. So um, the chorus goes like this. Let it rise like incense, my whole life, a fragrance every ounce, here broken at Every breath and offering my heart cries, these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Kings. Let's sing that again. Let it rise. 
our burdens. You want us to put that on you. You already paid it all for us on the cross. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you that when we're not strong, you are strong. And that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. God, I thank you for that. And all to Jesus I surrender all to
Thank you that you <clears throat> you are God and I am not. God, I thank you that we can come to you and just surrender all that we are, however we are. We can come however we are in that moment. I thank you for that. I thank you for your love and your goodness and your mercy that's new every day. God, I pray that you'd bless this time that we are together um, online, and I pray that you'd be with Pastor Glenn as he speaks, and pray that um, you would just speak to our hearts today. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. service where we join our hearts together in prayer, and I invite you to spend a few moments now in, in silent reflection on how uh, our lives have fallen short of what God requires and demands of us, how we have fallen short of God's glory, and then I'll say a prayer of confession, and then we'll move into a time of intercession. So if you want to um, list your uh, intercessions, your prayers and petitions uh, in the comment section on Facebook, uh, you can do that now and we will, uh, we will lift them up at the, at the time. So let's spend a few moments now in, in silent reflection. O oh God, we confess to you that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory, that we have done things and said things and thought things that cause your heart to grieve. We have also not said things and not done things that you would have blessed and encouraged. We've fallen short. We can't in our own strength live up to your holiness, O oh God. And so we need a Savior. We trust in the blood and sacrifice of Jesus to cleanse us of our sins and to draw us close to your heart, God. We trust in him to be sufficient for all that we need to be made right with you. So fill us with your spirit. Cleanse our hearts, our thoughts, our actions. Move us into deeper righteousness and holiness this day as we seek to follow Jesus with all of our heart all of our mind, all of our strength. We give you thanks for your abiding and merciful love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I'm looking for any uh, prayer requests. Ted says he's doing well. Okay, well, no, that's, that was the church that was saying that to Ted. <laughs> Uh, Ted, we hope you're doing well. You're in our prayers that you will uh, uh, heal up from your surgery um, and that you will uh, uh, be back up on your feet and back down here real soon. What other prayer requests do you have, church, that we can lift up this morning as part of our prayer time? Don says, pray for Carol, Linda, Mercy, Jean, Ted, and our church founders. Okay, prayers for all the firefighters. Ellen asks for prayers for the firefighters working to, so hard to protect the state and uh, for their personal safety and endurance. Pray for a roommate who um, is not very nice and moves, um, and hope that this roommate moves out soon. Okay. What other prayer requests do we have?
I'm waiting. <laughs> I know, it's, there's a lag, so it's not always uh, instantaneous. We do want to pray for uh, our first responders who are fighting the fires and uh, cleaning up from the hurricanes and all the various natural disasters that are going on, as well as those first responders taking care of COVID patients and others. Um, Don asked for prayers for me, for the pastor, and for staff, protection from the enemy. Thank you, Don. Appreciate that, the prayers. Safe journeys for all of you who will be traveling, and uh, make sure you take your precautions. George, we're praying for you, for comfort and strength. Recently lost his mother, and of course still grieving Vicky's loss, and uh, just pray for, for George. Ted, we're praying for you, that you'll get well. You had surgery on your leg, and you're home now, great, and, uh, and pray that uh, you will heal up really well for that. Any others? All right, well, keep, keep adding them if, uh, if you like, and those of you who are online can, can add them into your prayers. So let's pray. Lord God, we come to you today as a family, um, distanced by miles at times and, and uh, not being able to be together for this time of worship physically, but we are together in spirit, and we thank you for these prayer requests that have come in, and we pray for all of them. We pray for those who are sick and those who are uh, recovering from surgery, those who are needing surgery. We pray for your healing touch. For those who are feeling isolated and lonely in this pandemic season, we pray that your comfort will be with them and that um, your people will reach out to them and, and to remind them of your abiding presence. We pray for those who are struggling with financial burdens and uh, Emotional burdens, we ask for your sustaining strength for them. For those who are challenged uh, by working at home or uh, uh, just any way that this, uh, this new um, reality is challenging them, pray for your, uh, for your presence that will uplift and uphold them during this time. God, help us to reach out to one another and help us to be a uh, sustaining presence for one another through all of this. We pray for our neighbors. We pray for our communities, our state, and our nation. Pray for godly wisdom for our leaders. We pray for unity in our country as we enter this political season. Help us to care for one another even if we don't think alike. Help us to love one another as Jesus has shown us and, and enables us to love one another. And indeed, we lift our hearts to the whole world. Pray that you would end this pandemic of COVID-19, that you would help those who are searching for a vaccine and uh, help them to develop that quickly. Just rid our world, Lord, of this plague uh, as we stand on your promise to be with us forever. Bless us, bless the world leaders to cooperate together in this and all the other challenges facing our world. For peace, for um, assistance that is needed in disasters, for all the ways that, uh, that we are challenged as a human race. Help us, God, to come together for the sake of one another and for the sake of your kingdom. For we pray today as we pray every day in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen indeed. All right, it is time for the offering. At, ooh, that, was kind of a, that was kind of a quiet hoo-hoo. A woo-hoo that was kind of a woo-hoo. 
Uh, it's a great opportunity that we have to give for the sake of others. And so uh, there are several ways that we invite you to give. One is by mailing a check into the church at 18225 Bouchard Street, Fountain Valley, California, 92708. Make the checks out to The Fount. You can also go to our website at thefount.church, click on the online giving tab and make your contributions online. You can also now give through text messaging by sending a text Send the word give to the number 714-276-6340 as it appears there on the screen. That's give to 714-276-6340. Also, you notice that QR code that's in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. If you take your phone, your smartphone, and put it on camera and focus on that code, you will be given a link that takes you directly to our website and our giving um, uh, uh, portion of the website. So that makes it real easy. You don't have to type anything in. You can just uh, go by using that QR code. All right. So we thank you for your, your willingness and your ability to give, and we're grateful to God for sustaining us through this period of time in ministry. Our church is doing well. We are not closed. We are open, and we are ministering in the name of Jesus. Now we have a special offertory today, the goodness of God. Uh, Shelley and Nina are going to perform this for us.
Father, we thank you for the generosity of your people. We thank you for the abundance that you pour upon us for the sake of others. Help us, God, to give not only uh, through our church, but through our lives to others. Bless the offerings, bless the gifts. May they increase and multiply for the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, our children's song today is a fun one. We've done it before, but we're going we're gonna to do it again, and it's going to be awesome, right? It's going to be awesome. It's called, uh, uh, He Will Go Before You, or Praise the Name of Jesus, whichever uh, uh, title you like. But I love this song. We love to sing it with the preschool children. So come on up, preschool child. Sing it with us. All right. Olivia is going to join us up here. Or she's going to... She's going to join her dad. All right, here we go. Here we go. It goes like this. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name forever. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus from the start. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name forever. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus from your heart. And he will go before you. He will go before you. He will go before you and give you victory. And he will go before you. He will go before you. He will go before you and defeat the enemy. He, 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 he. Let's sing it again. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise his name forever. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus from the start. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus, praise his name forever. Praise the name of Jesus, praise the name of Jesus from your heart. And he will go before you, he will go before you, he will go before you and give you victory. And he will go before you, he will go before you, he will go before you and defeat the enemy. All right, that's a fun song. I like that song. Thank you, Olivia, for coming up on the platform with us. All right, I apologize we don't have lyrics for you on the screen. We're having technical difficulties, which is a, a, a common occurrence. <laughs> so, but we're going to sing um, our hymn now, number 402, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. Um, I think we'll probably post the lyrics on, this, on the comment section uh, like we have in the past. So, but if you have a hymnal at home, turn to number 402 and let's sing together, I want, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
Good morning. I'm happy to be with you guys again. Uh, it's been a long time away, and so it's good to be back. Uh, Pastor Glenn asked me to read the scripture for today, which I think he did because he wanted to dodge the bullet of reading it himself. This is a dangerous passage to read <laughs> sometimes. Uh, but it's Ephesians 5, um, verse 21 through 6, I'm sorry, through chapter 6, verse 9. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church, the body of which he is the Savior. Just as the church is subject to Christ, so also wives ought to be in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, in order to make her holy by cleansing her with the washing of water by the word. So as to present yourself... Um, sorry, so as to present the church to himself in splendor without a spot or wrinkle or anything of the kind. Yes, so that she may be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as they do their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own body, but he nourishes and tenderly cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a great mystery, and I am applying it to Christ and the church. Each of you, however, should love his wife as himself, and a wife should respect her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. And fathers, do not provoke your children to anger but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling in singleness of heart as you obey Christ, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Render service with enthusiasm as to the Lord and not to men and women, knowing that whatever good we do, we will receive the same again from the Lord, whether we are slaves or free. And masters, do the same to them. Stop, treat, stop threatening them, for you know that both of you have the same master in heaven, and with him there is no partiality. And God bless the reading of his word. All right, thank you, Rick. Let me get this up here. We are nearing the end of our series in Ephesians, uh, this is episode 10 in a, an 11-episode series on Ephesians called Creating a Home, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've gained a lot from it. I hope that uh, you are uh, becoming familiar with Ephesians and growing in your understanding and appreciation of this great uh, book in the New Testament. Uh, this passage is a difficult one, though, because... Um, uh, a lot of Christians avoid it completely because it just doesn't fit into their worldview, and they fear, figure that Paul didn't know what he's talking about, and so therefore we just ignore this part of Scripture. Uh, but here at the Fount, we are a biblical church, and we do not ignore any parts of Scripture. We seek to understand it and seek to apply it to our lives and to uh, understand it as God intended us for, for us to understand it. So we're entering now this next phase of, uh, actually we entered it last week, the so what phase, where Paul began the th first three chapters of this letter kind of laying a theological and theoretical uh, groundwork, and now he's turning to what that means. So the question is, so what? It's a practical application of these first three chapters of Ephesians. We've already learned that because God has included all folks, including Gentiles, and adopted us as his own, that all people can be part of the home that God is creating, that we're under one roof, and that God intends for us to respect each other's gifts and to work together in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of Christ's body. We learned last week about household rules, that maturity is doing what you know you have to do even if you don't want to. And following the rules that God has laid down for us is an important part of our lives of uh, righteousness and holiness. And in God's home and God's family, there are rules of behavior that distinguish us from the rest of the world. We are to be a peculiar people. I've said that last week and I'll say it again. We are to be different 
than other people in the world. If Christians are no different than other people in the world, then um, there's, there's no, nothing to distinguish us. I read a poll recently that in the mainline churches of America in particular, there is a statistically no difference between what uh, mainline Christians believe and what the world at large believes. Can, let that sink in a little bit. There's statistically no difference between what mainline Christians, and these are the, uh, the Presbyterians, the Methodists, the uh, uh, um, Lutherans, and, the, uh, and others, the Episcopalians, and so forth. Statistically, no difference in what they believe and what the people of the world believe. And my friends, this is a problem. This is a problem because what the Bible lays down for us is significantly different than what people understand and believe in the world. And we need, to, we need to uphold that. We need to understand it. And so we're turning to the Christian household. Remember that the home that God is creating relates to the church universal, the church Catholic. It relates to our church, the fount, and it relates to the churches in our homes, our households. And the passage this week is mostly directed at the Christian household. Now, there is a danger in taking this passage wrong because we want to make this passage and others like it into a new law that God has placed husbands in a position of spiritual head over their wives. We want to make that mean that the husbands call all the shots, that they're in charge, in other words, that wives should be subservient to their husbands in all things. And so if their husband is an idiot or a bully, well, then that's just tough. And uh, she, uh, a woman needs to place herself under his thumb is, what, is where our minds go when we read this passage. Uh, many women in conservative Christian churches and homes have allowed themselves to be beaten because of this mistaken interpretation. But just as Paul lists of ethical behaviors are not law, so this is not law, capital L. We get into trouble when we try to make the New Testament into a new law, uh, especially when we go beyond what the New Testament itself says. The, the new law of Christ is very simple. It's this, love one another. That's it, love one another. And as we've seen so far in the second half of Ephesians, love is still the guiding factor in how we relate to each other, not laws, love. And so instead of focusing on an isolated phrase and using it as a proof text, like wives be subject to your husbands, we need to read the whole passage and see it in context to what Paul is teaching throughout Ephesians. And the key to understanding this passage is the first verse of it, chapter 5, verse 21. It says, be subject to one another. Did you hear me? Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. It is a matter of agape, which is love, but it's specifically the kind of love that God has for us, willing to sacrifice for the sake of the beloved. Now, this passage is also uh, about authority. It's about authority, not control. And this is a distinction that we sometimes don't make. We want to make it about control, but it's really about authority. And this is where we sometimes get off the mark uh, as conservative evangelical Christians, and it's where liberal Christians go ballistic when they read this passage because they read control rather than authority. And there's a distinct difference. There is a distinct difference between authority and control. Authority is a matter of responsibility. Control is a matter of power. Submission, or being subject, is a good thing only when it is voluntary, not forced, right? To, to subject a people by force into submission is not a good thing, whereas submitting ourselves voluntarily is, is something entirely different. People who have an issue with authority often do because those in authority over them exercise control rather than responsibility. And so they rebel against the authority, even legitimate authority, and do not learn how to properly submit to authority. Now, headship is another concept key to understanding this passage. It says, just as Christ is the head of the church, so a husband is the head of his wife. 
Now we get the second half of that sentence and, we, and we, we've got it nailed, right? Husbands, the head of the wife. But the first part modifies that. Just as Christ is the head of the church, so a husband is the head of his wife. Let's think about that for a minute. What did Jesus do for the church? He died for it. He sacrificed his life for it. He gave up everything for the church, for the good of the church. Far from forcing his will upon the church, Jesus offered himself as a servant and as a sacrifice. He didn't force his will on us. He sacrificed for us. Headship is about sacrifice. Headship is about leadership, and biblical leadership is servant leadership. You lead by serving. Remember Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. A husband who wants to force his will on his wife should take note of this, because this is what the Bible is talking about. But there is authority in headship. That authority is a spiritual authority, and it is given for special responsibility, not for special privilege. Sometimes, often, it is a heavy responsibility indeed, and sometimes it requires sacrifice. A husband who does not fulfill the responsibilities forfeits the authority. That's just the way it is. And in many families where the husband or father does not fulfill the responsibilities of of authority, there is a vacuum of spiritual authority and a vacuum that the enemy is more than willing to exploit. You know, in our culture, absentee fathers is one of the major reasons for the trouble that we're in. And I'm not speaking just of one particular ethnic or racial uh, family. I'm talking about all families. Absentee fathers is one of the biggest problems that our culture, our society has. But agape, love, is a guiding principle. Husbands are responsible for their wives to love them, to care for them, to provide what they need. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about what women really need spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Husbands are to take care of their wives' spirits, their souls, and their bodies. And parents are responsible for their children. They, there are right ways and there are wrong ways to punish misbehaving children. Parents are responsible to learn the right ways of doing that. And some are more responsible than others. There is a great lack of parental responsibility in our culture. Now here's, 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 a, here's a difficult one. Masters are responsible for their slaves. Now just as Paul... You know, Hear me out. Just as Paul urged Philemon to treat his slave Onesimus as a brother, so here he says that both the master and the slave have the same master in heaven, and he doesn't distinguish between them. He doesn't make a distinction. So masters, you better take good care of your slaves, treating them like brothers and sisters. In other words, a relationship in the Lord. We'll talk more about slavery in a moment. Love, agape, is the guiding principle again. Love is what is spoken about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7, that says, Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. It's about love, agape. Not about law, not about control. It's about love. And it's about relationship. Notice the word is subject. We are to be subject to one another. We are to treat others subjectively, not objectively. When you're in a relationship with someone, they, became, they become a subject rather than an object. It says, be subject to one another. And when we make each other objects, the relationship fails. And when the relationship fails, 
the guidelines that Paul lays out for us don't make any sense at all. That's why I can tell a woman who is being abused by her husband that it's, it's okay to leave, to stop the abuse. That's why when children are being abused, it's okay to remove them from the abusive situation. Now slavery, I said I'd come back to that. Slavery was a given in Paul's day. Even otherwise moral people saw nothing wrong with slavery by and large. But slavery is itself the ultimate objectification of another human being, making them into an object rather than a subject. And in God's greater purpose, slavery has no place. You see, Paul was moving away from slavery, away from that institution. And unfortunately, it's still around even today in human trafficking and the sex trade. It's a terrible, terrible scourge on our world. But what the Christian faith is about is love, agape, the kind that Jesus demonstrated. And ultimately, finally, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is our model. In all things, we are to grow up in Christ, Ephesians 4.15. Becoming more and more like Jesus is the goal of Christian discipleship. Jesus is the measure. It says, be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ, verse 21. And it says, wives, be subject to your husbands as you are to the Lord, verse 22. It says, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church, verse 25. And it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, chapter 6, verse 1. And it says, slaves, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling and singleness of heart as you obey Christ. Verse 5, it's all about Jesus. It all comes back to him. This week I want you to read Ephesians again, and I hope that you've been becoming familiar with it as you uh, go through this series with me. But read it again. It's a short book. It's only six chapters. Read it and memorize this verse, chapter 5, verse 21. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's a short one this week. You should be able to memorize it. Ephesians 5, 21. Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Next week, we'll conclude this series uh, by looking at Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 20, and the sermon's entitled Home Security. So join us next week for that as well. Let's spend a few moments in silent reflection as we consider what God uh, may be saying to our hearts. Today is number 549 in the Methodist hymnal, Where Charity and Love Prevail. Uh, let us sing together, 549, Where Charity and Love Prevail.
Let strife among us be unknown. Let all contention cease. Be Christ the glory that we see. Be ours his holy peace. Let us recall that in our midst dwells God's begotten Son. As members of Thank you for joining us today for worship here at the Fount. We're happy that you're able to find us. And uh, for those of you who would like to join us for our fellowship time on Zoom, um, feel free to join us. You'll see the Zoom credentials come up uh, in the video loop after I finish here. And then uh, if you still can't find it, then call Julie in the office. She'll help you uh, get uh, hooked up there for our Zoom fellowship time uh, together at about 11.45 or so as we get started. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. God be with you until we get back together again on Facebook Live and elsewhere. God be with you. Amen.